it's Lindsay, and I am back for episode four of the Weekly Speak. Thanks for joining me. I just want to basically recap um, some of the posts from the past week, and the posts that I'm referring to are the tidbits that I put up on Instagram or Facebook to try and help you or give some insight into healing your thyroid and your overall health. So let's get started with one of the first posts from the week, which I took a picture of a quote out of my planner by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And that quote is, always do what you are afraid to do. So someone like him says something like that because it's, it's human to look at a goal or look at a dream and think, I'm not really worthy of that. I don't see how I could possibly achieve that. Or, um, you know, maybe you were told a lot throughout your childhood or throughout your life that, you know, you weren't good enough or, you know, you've just kind of put yourself into, you've painted yourself into this corner of believing that you're not really capable of anything that's great or outstanding. And that couldn't be further from the truth. And the reason why somebody like Ralph Waldo Emerson said that quote is because people like him got tired of their own BS. They got tired of being afraid and of being scared and of living in fear, and they just went for it. If there was something that they wanted, they, they just went for it. So anyone who's achieved anything great, that's kind of the first step is you take all these, you know, self-defeating thoughts and you just scoot them aside and say, no, I'm not listening to that anymore. That's what I want, so I'm going to go after it. And you just have to have that grit and that attitude to do that, right? So um, you don't want to regret. You don't want to look back in your life and regret not taking the plunge or not making that first step towards something. So let that motivate you. Good old Ralph. He's got some good quotes. Um, The next thing I wanted to talk about was I finally posted to the blog And um, I talked this past week about my experience with goitrogens or goitrogenic foods. So if you're not familiar with that term or you're not really sure what that is, um, goitrogens are foods that are thought to inhibit the uptake of iodine and inhibit the synthesis of thyroid hormone and basically disrupt hormone function in your thyroid. There's a lot of conflicting thoughts on this. All I can do is tell you what I've experienced and what I have read about and what I know to be true just from what my own experience has been. And in the, in the blog, I talk about how, um, you know, these foods like broccoli, cabbage, strawberries, Brussels sprouts. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a whole list, cauliflower. Um, if you Google goitrogens or goitrogenic foods, or if you just read my post, which that's what I want you to do. Um, if you go to heartspeakhealth.com slash blog, you'll see that it's it's right there and you can get the list and then you can read about what I've, I've experienced with these foods. And so what I find is that these foods are so healthy and life-giving and have so many wonderful properties to them that to me, it's just kind of silly not to eat them. And that was the conclusion that I finally came to after I had been on my journey of healing for over a year. I was just like, I'm going to eat these. I mean, you know, I want them. I'm craving them. I'm going to eat them. So, um, what I found was that they were extremely energizing and, you know, I didn't seem to have any issues. Now, I was incorporating iodine-rich foods into my diet, and I still do, like various sea vegetables, okay? Um, You know, things that you would put into miso soup like wakame or dulse flakes, which is a great salt substitute. 
even things like kelp, which I do supplement with kelp. I take kelp capsules. So I have that worked in there, and I think it's a good idea that if you are worried about this possibility of these goitrogens disrupting that, you know, the synthesis of the hormones and disrupting the uptake of the iodine, then just be sure to have equal amounts of iodine-rich foods in your diet as well. Um, you know, that's all you can do. And like I said, I think the benefits of those foods far outweigh the risk because you'd have to eat like an incredibly insane amount of those foods for it to have even some minor effect. That's that's what like the newer research is saying that I'm reading and the feedback that I'm getting from other people. So check out the post and you can let me know what you think about that. The next thing that I said this past week was that we need to stop obsessing over calories and start obsessing over nutrients. Our society has become so obsessed with counting and points and measuring and portions, and it's just this very stressful and tedious thing. And if we could start to get away from that, and if we could focus more on the quality of our foods and making sure that we're eating things that are not hosed down with, you know, different types of sprays and chemicals and things that aren't genetically altered and, uh, you know, trying to get food in its best state, if we could focus more on that and worry less about the measurement of everything, I think that we would have a lot more fun and have a lot more healing. So just keep that in mind. And if you have questions about that, or if you have a comment or want to talk further, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me or comment on this video. The next post from my Instagram, Facebook feeds, uh, I, every Friday I try to do a healing fiction post. So I just try to write like a little short excerpt, um, something that's like a story, very short, but this brief thing, um, I try to make it something that connects to a challenge, to something that we are all dealing with, right? So this post said she wasn't being honest with herself. And I find that a lot of women are stretching themselves way too thin and they're trying to do way too much. And it's really at the root of their health issues because stress is the thief of nutrients and natural flow that's supposed to be going on in our bodies. And so when we are experiencing high levels of stress and we are putting ourselves out there and we're just stretched too thin and we've got roll strain and we've got way too much going on and we're neglecting ourselves, you know, this is really at the root of the physical dysfunctions that we experience. And so if there's anything you can start doing now to help heal your body it's to stop suppressing thoughts and feelings of, I can't go on like this. I can't do this anymore. This is too much. I'm overwhelmed. I need help. I wish he would help me. I wish she would help me. I wish I wasn't doing all of this on my own. That's the type of thing. Those are, those are, the, those are the things that we need to start changing at the beginning of a healing journey because you need support. And you need, you need to a lot of times maybe pare down and start eliminating some things off of your plate that are just driving you crazy and not providing any benefit, really. So let's try to be honest with ourselves and let's really, you know, acknowledge the thoughts and the feelings that are coming at us 
rather than dismissing it. And um, the last post that I want to talk about is, um, it's actually from yesterday, and I just, I talk a little bit about different approaches to illness, and I took a picture of the books that Anthony William uh, sent to me. I, I won one of his uh, book bundles. He had shared a post of mine, not this week, but last week, and um, he shared it on his Instagram, and it was about sunbathing and the benefits of the sun and how laying in the sun, even indoors, and letting it hit your thyroid is extremely healing. That's something that he talks about in his book, Thyroid Healing. So he had shared that post, and also um, I was one of his giveaway winners, and I won a book bundle, and so I took a nice little picture of it and just um, wrote some encouragement there about healing. And I kind of start out talking about how, you know, when you're diagnosed with something like hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism or Graves' disease or Hashimoto's or whatever it is, um, you know, there's two ways to react or to respond to that diagnosis. First way is to accept it and to just be like, okay, I'll take the medication, whatever. And there's a lot of people that do that and they're happy doing that. And that's fine. If that's what, if that's what they want, that's what they want to do. That's, that's up to them. That's their life. Then, then that's what they should do. But then there are some of us like me who questioned it and thought, well, how is it that, that a short time ago I was completely fine and now all of a sudden everything's changed? Um, so that wondering leads us to lots of questions and then maybe looking for answers and then finding people, finding support or finding a mentor or a health coach to then guide us and to help us go to the root of the problem and figure out exactly what's going on. And so once you get to that point, then you have another choice. You can either complicate the situation and think that there's some type of a crazy, magical, mystical thing that you have to do, or you can just look at the facts and look at, okay, these are the little things that you have to start doing on a consistent basis every day with your diet, with your exercise, with your relationships, with your career, with your spirituality, and implement that, and little by little, every day, over a long period of time, start to feel better. So I encourage you to not overcomplicate whatever challenge you're having with your thyroid or with your overall health. The key with healing is that it's, it's simple things that we have to do. But it's not easy to do them because it takes discipline and it takes consistency. And the biggest thing is that it takes making mistakes. It takes falling off, getting off track, falling off of the path. But that's normal. Like you just have to accept that. That's normal. It's, it's okay. It's actually good to maybe eat something that you really shouldn't because it's going to make you sick. Because then you get sick, you get your headaches or you get your stomach ache or whatever. And then you're like, okay, so I can see now why I should not be eating that because it's, it's making me sick. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, moving forward. You know, same thing with exercise. You skip a few days, you feel like crap. <sighs> Man, I need my exercise. It's like my antidepressant. What am I doing here? I feel like crap. I got to get back on track. Um, you know... Not, not making time to pray or have your meditation time. You know, that can start to make you feel heavy and worn down. Okay, got to get back on track with that. You know, it, it's, it's normal. It's okay. And, and the thing that happens is people get discouraged by their shortcomings and their mistakes, so they quit. But the truth is, you know, you can't, you can't quit. You can't let your shortcomings and your failures make you quit. You just have to accept those things as part of the journey. That's part of life. 
And if you can just remind yourself that that's okay and that the key is to brush yourself off and get back up and get back on the horse and keep going, then you won't go wrong. You won't. You will do great. So I think that was all I wanted to cover for now. And um, I just want to remind you that if you are in the Pittsburgh area and you're watching this, I'm having a workshop on Tuesday evening at our juice bar, Clean Juice East Liberty. I'm having a thyroid workshop. I will, I will be going over everything that I can share. And um, I'll be providing samples of juice and samples of an essential oil that's very good for the throat chakra, which will be part of the presentation. So if you're in the area and you'd like to come, please, please join us. All right. So that's it for this episode of the Weekly Speak, episode four. I'm signing off. Have a great week this week, and I will talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks. Bye.